Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Okay, brothers and sisters, so good morning, church. As the message says, there, in the monitor, please turn off or put to silent mode your mobile phones. If you have mobile phones, just turn it off or put to silent mode. Otherwise, Pastor Manny will confiscate your mobile phone. Yeah. And give it to me. <laughs> and give it to Pastor Bern. <laughs> okay. So, maybe better just put it to silent mode so that uh, uh, we don't have any disturbance. Now, if, if this is an emergency call, you can just go outside and take the call. Amen. Amen. So, now let's start, let's start this morning the message of the Lord with a prayer. Amen. I'd like to encourage you all to uh, be silent and, and focus on the Lord. Feel the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is here. From the start of the praise and worship, the Lord is already here. And His Holy Spirit is here. His Holy Spirit is with you. Our The Holy Spirit is with us. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the praise and worship, Lord God. We know, Lord God, uh, we know, Lord, that we, we were able, Lord God, to approach your throne of grace. Lord God, and we were able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Once again, Father God, I pray, Lord, that you that you be with us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit be with us. And let your Holy Spirit, Lord, guide us into all truths, Lord God. Let us let uh, let the Holy Spirit show us, Lord, those your your unfathomable words, Lord God. Let the Holy Spirit make us understand these words, Lord God, of yours that we are going to hear today, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. And we rebuke all the works of the enemy. No hindrances, Lord God, will we will be able, will prosper in your name, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we declare, Lord God, your love and your peace in this church. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, once again, good morning. We'll start with the message for today. It's not working. Konting intermission lang, wala pala yung USB, kaya hindi ko magana. Okay, testing. Yeah, kaya. Okay, Amen. So let's start with the message this morning, brothers and sisters, and the message, oh, the message this morning is about commitment. Because last, last Friday, the message is me, myself, and I. Uh, and, and I believe, uh, Brother Jong touched upon many things there, and one thing, one thing that uh, me myself I'd like to stress is yung pride. Alam yun yung pride. Me myself and I. Uh, before while I was a study, I was able to come across pride, and it says that pride is like a security guard. You know the security guard. You know before you before you are able to enter a building you must come first to this security guard this guy who will say oh stop no you're not allowed to come inside that's pride you know when when pride kicks in pride says no what why are you going to let yourself uh, um, allow yourself to to give way you know that's pride it's like a security em enveloping as ourselves, and I believe uh, here in, in JRK, there's no more pride, amen. And if yeah. there, there, if there, if there are, praise God because the Lord is teaching us every week, you know, uh, how to deal with this pride called life, the pride of life, amen. So the the message for this morning, brothers and sisters, is all about sisters is all about commitment. So the, the message for today will be uh, going in and around about commitment. And for a start, we have defined commitment as per uh, the dictionary I got from the internet. It says, commitment is the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause 
activity, etc. So that is commitment. Do, do we have commitment, brothers and sisters? Amen. 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 So it is being dedicated to a cause acti or activity. You know, have you imagined yourself uh, or have you undergone uh, this process of dedicating yourself for a cause? I know, I know there are people like, for example, no, in the Philippines, uh, last, last uh, like during presidential election, there are people that, that are dedicating their lives to supporting a particular candidate, even without, uh, uh, even without getting any monet monetary benefits. You no, know? so that that is commitment. What I'm saying is commitment is something that's coming from inside of you. It is an engagement or an obligation that restricts freedom of action. Now, commitment is very good because if you have a commitment, then you have a built-in. It's like a built-in self-check. Because if you are committed to something, then you will do that something. Even if, for example, I'm committed to come to church every Friday. Okay? And every one of us, I believe, wants to sleep. But if you are committed, if you have this commitment, then it will become a self-check for you to, that, that will tell you, no, you're committed. So your, your freedom is being restricted by your commitment to uphold that commitment. And it says also that commitment is a willingness to give your time, energy to something that you believe in or promise. Amen. So that is all about commitment. But... You know, brothers and sisters, uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus, and God the Father also has commitment. And, and with us, commitment within our relationship with one another. Do you know? Do you agree? No. I think that because you're not responding. Yes, brothers and sisters. For example, the Holy Spirit first. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit. And we call it the Holy Spirit unwavering commitment to the Lord Jesus. Do you know that the Lord Jesus is very committed? I mean, the Holy Spirit is very committed to our Lord Jesus. Amen. He is. See, in John chapter 16, verse 13 to 15 says, But when He, the He there, the He word there, is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth comes. He will, give, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. See? How committed the Holy Spirit is to our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, the, I mean, the Holy Spirit will not speak on His own. The Bible says He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears and He will tell you what is yet to come. So that's why really brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to have the Holy Spirit. And I believe each one of us here has have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 So we have the, the Holy Spirit. So this is the commitment of the Holy Spirit to our Lord Jesus Christ. He will only tell us something that came only from our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord Jesus Christ's commitment to His Father, which is God the Father. In Luke twenty two forty two, it says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. What is the, this um, passage from the Bible was the time when the Lord Jesus was about to be taken and crucified. Now he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Okay, his the the human in him, the the Jesus in him, is very much afraid because he know he knows what's going to happen. Uh, kau ba naman, no, alam mo mamamatay ka na, hindi ka mamatatakot, di ba? Because that is human nature. You know that you're going to die, you're going to suffer. Then of course, you will uh, you will become afraid, you will become very fearful. So that's the, the human inside him. But but that is not, uh, hindi, ano yung mas matimbang? That's not, wait, it's not weightier than 
than his commitment to the father. His commitment is that what the father, what the father's will is for him, that should be done. That's why in Luke 22, 42, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. That is his commitment. That is our Lord Jesus Christ's commitment to the Father, to the work of the Father. Not his will, but the will of the Father be done. And in John 8.28, it says, So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. See, the, the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ has similarities. See, the Holy Spirit will only speak what, what was given to Him, what, what was told to Him by the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord Jesus Christ says, uh, I will know that I am He, and I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. So they have similarities. They are committed, the Holy Spirit is committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus Christ is committed to our God the Father. Amen. Amen. So now we have already completed one, one uh, not one cycle, but almost one cycle. Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe you know that you you can uh, guess what's next. So what's next is commitment of God the Father, but to who? So his commitment, God the Father's commitment to his people, to his creation, meaning his commitment to you and I. And this is very important, you know, because if not, we are not here anymore. See, John chapter 3, verse 16 says our favorite verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. See, that is, that is the comment, commitment of God. That's why when I was reading uh, this verse and, and uh, studying the message, I was saying, is it possible to remove love from commitment? I think you, you cannot commit to something that you do not love. Are you, are you getting me? Can you commit to something that you don't love? That something that you hate? No. So that's why really the Lord Jesus Christ is very committed to us because He says, For God so loved the world and take note. And I know you know, all of you know, know knows about this. He, he didn't say, For God so loved, the, so loved us, only Christians. He said, For God so loved the world. You see, the, our Lord Jesus Christ came here because of the sinners. So not because of that, but on the second coming, He will come here for us, for those who believed in His name, for those who accepted Him. Amen. But the, but, but the last of the the previous time He was here, He came for the lost. Okay, so that's why for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. So that is the Lord, the God, the Father's commitment toward us. So you see. Holy Spirit, commitment to Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus, commitment to God the Father. And now God the Father is committed to us. See how important we are to Him? We are very important to our, to our God the Father. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8-9 says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So that's, according to the Bible, the Lord's day is like a thousand years to us. You know, like for example, when you are at work, maybe you, maybe after two hours, you start work at eight. Then by ten o'clock, you look at your watch. Oh, for example, you finish five o'clock. Still, still, I need, I, I still need to stay here. And I still need to wait for 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 how many? For three, five hours before I can go home. We always want, we always want to go home and rest, of course, or see our loved ones. No, but see how 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 our God made His day become very long for us, because see. Remember, brother, as it says here, a day for the Lord is like a thousand 
years to us. No? And then, in the succeeding verses, it was explained. Oh, uh, not in the succeeding verses, in the other verse, it was explained. Sorry, so it's not here. But in the succeeding verse, it says, But God is not slow in keeping His promise. Andyan ba? Ay, nasa baba pala, ayun. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise as some understand slowness. So, He is not slow. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. That's our God. He wants everyone to come to repentance. That's why, you see, brothers and sisters, those right now, I'm, I'm looking at you. And I can see there are so many so many people in white and in red. No meaning yung mga blank, blank seats. You know, last, I think it was Pastor Bernie who said, that the love of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is very contagious. You know, there's no problem with the Lord. The problem is with us. Okay, it's very contagious. If we only allow, because there are times that we are shy to... Uh, maybe to share our faith, to share to share our God. That's why, the like what Pastor Manning says, no, our commitment, one soul for the Lord. Amen. So, but really, if we will, if we will, uh, magpapatuloy and magpapatuloy sa English. Continue. If we will continue, if we will continue with the Lord and keep on abiding His words. Those blank chairs over there will be filled with souls. Okay, now I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, don't hear what I'm not saying, sabi nga ni, ano, ni Pastor Marsan. Don't, don't hear one, what I'm not saying. I'm not saying uh, that I want quantity. But if those chairs will be filled, that means those are souls saved. Those souls that, are, that have been saved. You know what? Uh, how how happy would that or how how, how uh, joyful that a while ago we, we sang joy in the house right how joyful it's going to be if these these chairs are full of souls that have been saved full of lost souls before but now found have been found now how joy will there be in this house Joy in the house of the Lord, Amen. Amen. And 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 the Lord will will really, uh, um, sa anak. Uh, for example, if our Father sees us doing something good, really He will bless you. He will bless us. He will bless everyone. He will bless. He will keep you the desires of your heart. Amen. 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 No, hindi na <laughs> Amen. Okay, and again, in our God, the Father's unwavering commitment, Numbers 23, verse 19 says, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So that is our God, not like us, human being. Napap yung, yung pangako, napapako. Yung promise, the promise is being nailed. Uh, sa English eh. Pangako na papa ako. So the promise is being nailed. <laughs> Yun. So, that is God the Father's unwavering commitment to us. And really, that's why brothers and sisters don't think the, don't think it a loss, no, your time when you are going to church. Because it, this is, it's like exercising your your right as a children of God being here at, at church. But don't get me wrong. Anywhere, everywhere, because God is omniscient, God is omnipresent, He's everywhere. So you can connect with Him even when you are at home, anywhere. But Hebrews 10.25 says, do not uh, neglect coming together, if I'm not mistaken. Nandito yan eh. Do not neglect meeting together. Because in, in, in Tagalog, palakasan. This is how we will 
uh, we will fellowship with each other and we will this is how we will make our bond strong you know see who who here who among here has brothers or sister how many marami po ba dala ko dalawa lang eh i i only have two brothers okay and one is here so you see how when when you come together remember uh think of your brothers or your sister when you come together along with your parents if they are still here see, can you imagine yung yung happiness yung joy joy that you are uh, experiencing that you are feeling that same joy should be like that because here when we are together we are creating this bond no this bond this christian bond the jr king bond not the james bond uh, the jr king bond we are creating this bond you know uh, we are we are here to help each other that's why not to, to, I, i'm very happy when we are when we as a church as a jr king church are able to help someone in need like before no you the the brother who he he's back home na si brother rosedito mm, uh, and by the way brothers and sisters he was sending message to uh, to the pastor uh, that he's really very thankful he's now in the philippines and in the uh what do you call this the finances that was uh given the collection that was given uh, to him from us uh, he's very thankful in that really uh, helped him a lot. So that's why... So on that, on that collection for, uh, uh, for, for the assistance, uh, we got 1,200 for that. Uh, and that's not from me. I gave, you gave, Together, collectively, it became big. It became uh, uh, helpful. It, be, it it had an impact. Imagine if I, I I will only give maybe I can only give fifty reals. So, ano lang yung magkano sa Pilipinas yun? But because we we here are supporting each other, now we were able to create that amount. Uh, to be able to help a brother amen so that's why really that's why i think that's why god uh holds us very dear very important because he will use he will use each and every one of us you know, to help those uh, those who are in need amen yes amen so next so we were talking about the, the commitment of the Holy Spirit, commitment of the Lord Jesus, and we were talking about the commitment of God the Father to us. Now let's talk about the commitment, our commitment, okay? That, let's talk about first the commitment of the early believers. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. So this reading this reading this verse gives you gives you an understanding that the commitment of the early believers is to our god amen because it says love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength so the commitment of the early believers is to our god luke 10 27 this is the same he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Now, who is your neighbor? Church. Who is your neighbor? Is it? Now, if you if you put it like this in the context of like this, in the context of family, okay? If I am me, Aldrin, and this is my brother, we are living in the same house, so he is not my neighbor. So that means my neighbor is someone who is not in the in in the same family. No, so so to me, the, love your neighbor as yourself means love. I, I I always hear 
the, the word being said, love the unlovable. No, meaning, uh, love those who hate you. Love those who do you wrong. Uh, because the Lord, the Lord says, if you do that, you will heap, you will heap and then co coals, coals into his head. Tama ba? Tama po, Pastor, no? Nakalimutan ko yung verse, eh. If you do that, you will heap coals into his head. I don't know if you, if you read on Facebook, I share, I think I shared that to Brother Joseph and some other brothers. Uh, the, it's like an experiment. It's like a, an experiment. So, there were one guy, and then one guy um, ha having a mic like me, and then there were two guys, another. So, let's just say there are two groups. No, but the, the, the other group is not a group actually, it's only composed of one. But the other team is two. So, the, now the activity is like this. Uh, for example, Brother Kenneth and Brother Michael, okay? So what, what they need to do is they need to make me ang uh, uh, become angry at them. So they, what they need to do is they need to tell me or say all crazy bad things to me. You know, ang pogi-pogi mo naman. Ay, mali pala. Sorry. Uh, so that's their objective to 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 make me become angry say all bad things to me okay and then what i will do is i will try to defend and i will try to uh hit back at them so the exper in the experiment that's what they did eventually they end up uh wrestling each other like an M M MMA fighting because they were not able to control their emotions, you know, because he, he was hitting, I was hitting back, hitting back again, and hitting, 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 and finally they, they just physically uh, assaulted each other. So now that's the first thing, and then the second thing, they, they changed, they, 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 the same, same activity, but the speaker did uh, the opposite. So you will still hit at me, but I will hit you with love. It's like that. So the 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 two guys were was hitting him, and he's he's um, answering with love, answering with kind words. You know what happened to the two? They were they were like uh, having difficulty to think what they're go what bad words they're going to tell to to me. And because he's the, the person is being kind, you know, the person is being kind. So afterwards, they they ask them, they ask the two guys. So what what was the difficult part, the first activity or the second? They said the second. Why? Because it's very hard to uh, to malign or to uh, hit someone that is being being good with you. So that's what they said. So. Yeah, so love our neighbors. Love the unlovable. Amen? So that's the, that's the key. If you do that, you will hit. Uh, hit cold, hit cold, Pastor? Sorry? Hip of panning Hip of panning calls. But what I understood there is, it's like you will make him calm down. Something like that. Maybe that's that's something for for uh, us to research. Anyway, let's move. Okay, so that's the early believer's commitment. Matthew 25, verse 40 says, The king will reply to Uriah, tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Yan. So whatever we are doing, pala, whatever we are doing to each other, then we are doing it to our King, our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are loving each other, then we are loving our Lord. If we are hating each other, then we are hating our Lord. So, I can, for me, I can speak for myself. I don't know with you about you, because I, uh, I've been, 
I've been through times na like you no know, there are times that that yung your thinking uh your thinking is like your uh ano yung exact word? I cannot I cannot pinpoint the exact word. It's like you're hating you 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 you, you have those hate feeling hindi <laughs> parang hate parang hindi ko hindi ko makuha yung exact word so so when, that's why when i read these words again I, it's like yun nga i ah uh, cool a uh, hip coach uh was thrown at me so the king will I truly tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine you did for me because whatever we do to each other and then it's like we are doing it to the Lord. So that's why, brothers and sisters, if if uh, you know, if you have someone, na uh, ano ba yung kagalit sa English? Kagalit? Enemy. If you have an enemy, <laughs> enemy ba? Hindi ata. Kaawa yung enemy. Bakit kaawa yung kagalit pero? So if you have an enemy, it's better. Uh, reconciliate, you know, because the, that is the that is our ministry. We, we have given a ministry of reconciliation. So let's just reconciliate. Mas madali yun. Instead of just carrying uh, baggage, you no know, weight of baggage, hindi ka, you'll not be able to move on. So just reconciliate. Let, learn to forgive. Release forgiveness and accept. <coughs> accept forgiveness as well. And then our Father will forgive us as well. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> uh, same lang to. Okay. Yeah. So the early believers' commitment still Acts two, uh, Acts chapter two, verse forty-two to forty-seven. Here we can see they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had, who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Amen. So this is their commitment. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. How are we devoting ourselves to the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ? Are we devoting ourselves to the Bible? Are we reading the Bible enough? Brothers yeah. and sisters. So if you are, praise the Lord. Please continue to do that. And uh, ask the Lord to, to give you more uh, wisdom and strength to continue to do it and, and do it even more. But if not, then, uh, then we better start devoting ourselves. Amen? Amen. Romans 6.17 But thanks be to God that through you, that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to that from to that form of teaching to which you were committed. Amen. So, once, because, see, how, how are we going to commit ourselves if we are not reading? How are we going to commit ourselves if we are not attending the church? So, First, we need to read, we need to attend, and then commit to to what we are reading from the Bible and to commit to what we are hearing. Amen? So, now this is the Apostles Paul's commitment to the preaching of the Gospel. Can I request someone to read for me, please? Sister Julie? Okay lang? Can you read? I see Sister Jaja na lang. Out the grave. Is it about oxen that God is concerned? 
surely he says this for us, doesn't he? Yes, this was written for us, because whoever lost and precious should be able to do so in the hope of sharing in the harvest. If we have sown the spiritual seed among you, is it too much if we reap a material harvest for you? Meron pa si Esther mamaya. So yung says having oxen dyan, yung oxen with a muscle. So it says, they, because the the ox when while they are plowing, plowing, sometimes uh, or most of the time they are eating what they are plowing. So that's why they put muscle so that they they won't eat from where they they are plowing. Plowing. That's what is being said there. Yung binasa ni ni Sister Jaja. And then Sister Kaya pa. Si, si Brad Joseph naman. Brad Joseph, pwede. Read. First Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 12, If others have this right of support for you, shouldn't we have it all the more? If we did not use this right, on the contrary, we put up with anything rather than hinder the gospel of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve in the temple, temple get their food from the temple? And that those who serve at the altar share in what is offered on the altar. In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their giving from the gospel. Chapter uh, verse 15. But I have not used any of this rights, and I am not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me. For I would rather die than, uh, than allow anyone to deprive me of this food. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Go to me, do not preach the gospel. If I preach the voluntary, I have rewarded. If not voluntary, voluntary. And I am simply discharging the trust committed to me when then is my reward. Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I, I may offer it free of charge. And so, not to make foolish Full use of my rights and future. Amen. So, sabi niyan, according to to what Brother Joseph read, the preacher now, the preacher, and the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. I guess that's the reason why, like in the Philippines, uh, we have full-time pastors. No, and and they are full time and they, they are being supported by the church because uh, they need they need um, finances for a living as well. They need to eat. They need to clothe themselves. Um, sometimes they have family. They need to provide to their family as well. So that's why. But Apostle Paul says here that, uh, but he, he but I have not used any of these rights. Apostle Paul says he have not used any of of these rights. Like here in Qatar, we we the pastors and those who are preaching here, uh, we are not um, using these rights as well. No, it's it's up to Pastor Mani. But what I'm trying to say here, why I put this here, is because this is the commitment of of Apostle Paul. It's like he's saying that uh, in verse 17 he says, I have. A reward. Uh, let's start with uh, seven, verse 17. It says, If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. That's what he says. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging that the trust committed to me. So, in other words, what he's saying is in, in Philippines, yung word yan is yung bukal sa kalooban. Yung, ano ba sa English yun? Ano po? Wholeheartedly, ayun. so it's like uh, wholehearted, wholehearted, you're wholeheartedly you're giving, uh, you you are doing what it is that you are doing. So it's like you are preaching wholeheartedly. And then uh, 18 says, "What then is my reward? Just this: that in preaching the gospel, I may operate free of charge, and so not to make full use of my rights." as a preacher of the gospel. So that is the why I put that is because I just want to I just want to emphasize on the commitment of Apostle Paul in preaching the gospel. 
That's why meron pang isa yan, Apostle Paul's commitment to preaching the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9, 1923. Pwedeng pa rin. Ulit. Brad Kenneth, lang. Kaya mo ba? Kita. 1 Corinthians 9, 1923. Thought I am free and belong to no one. I have made myself a slave to everyone. To win as many as possible, to the Jew, I became like a Jew. To win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like what, like one under the law, thought I uh, myself and not under the law. So as to win those under the law, to those not having the law, I became like one not having the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law. So as to win those not having the law, to the weak I became weak. To win the weak I have became all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Amen. So, because we are talking about commitment, so this is the commitment of Apostle Paul in preaching the gospel. Uh, he said, whatever, uh, uh, he said, uh, to the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. So, if we want to to win the Kenyans, we must be like the Kenyans, no? maybe learn their language. Amen. So, I, I already have one language, Hakuna Matata. So, it's Swahili, right? See, we, we need to, what Apostle Paul is saying is, we need our commitment, like if we, we want to reach other people, you know, like every Saturday we are doing this um, leadership training. If we want to reach out to those people, we need to be like those people. It's not, uh, it, it will not work if we are, for example, I am the president of a company and here are workers if i will go there and will be acting like a president now if they are work if they if the people for example this group here are a group of workers and i'm a president of the company I, I don't come to them like a president but i come to them like lower than the worker you must humble yourself lower yourself uh, to what level they are so in order to reach out to them because if not, we will not be able to reach out. So that is his commitment. And that is also very important for us, to have that kind of commitment. Now we were talking about our commitment, one soul for the Lord. So how are we going to do that? For example, the, the, the people that you want to share is someone that is hurting. You need to be, to come to him or to come to her as like someone that is hurt. I'm not saying that na someone na, na, na someone hurt actually hurt it, but I mean someone who can sympathize. Ba? I mean, if for example, if Brother Kenneth is uh, very lonely because his son uh, Elias, because his son Elias is in the Philippines, and you want to to share the word of God, so you need to you need to be. You need to feel what he is feeling, you know? brother. I can I can feel you. you know, I know what that you are lonely right now, but you know the Lord God loves you very much. You know, your son is in the Philippines, but to God you are a son. And and the, the Lord God misses you also. And the Lord God wants to be with you. You start off like that, so that's why it. It's good that we need, we know the people that we are going to share. Who who the people that we are going to share. Okay? So that we can level level the playing field. You, know? uh, you come full of energy but the, the other guy is down. Maybe you will uh, you will throw him off instead of bringing him bringing him to the church. I mean, so that's commitment. So commitment is not submission, okay? Because you can, you can submit without 
and committing yourself. Do you agree? Do you agree, brothers, or not? Sino ang disagree? <laughs> disagree ata si Sister Fatima. Eh. Yes, you can, you can submit but not commit. Because submission is, is only following what is being told. But commitment is something more than submission. Commitment is, I think that later on, commitment is doing the right thing without anyone telling you to do the right thing. That is commitment. Submission is just following, submitting uh, to what is being told or submitting. Like for us pastor, sub we are submitting to our senior pastor. But if we are committed, you can you cannot commit without submitting. You know, if, if you like that more. But you can't submit without committing. Commitment is not just to follow. Parang, it's like one and two. They are just almost the same, no? Commitment is, on, is not just to support also. Okay? If you are supporting, it doesn't mean that you are committed because anytime you can stop supporting. Okay? Anytime you can stop following. Anytime you can stop submitting. But if you are committed, it's like an, uh, it's like a, an, an ended, an, uh, close-ended word. You know, not, not an open-ended word. It's like a close-ended word. I am committed. If you are committed, means you will do everything you can to do what, whatever needs to be done. Commitment is not just to observe laws or guidelines. Commitment is higher than those. Commitment is this. Commitment is from your own free will. So if you are, have this commitment, we said uh, our commitment to bring one, one soul for the Lord. Now my question is, do you have a free will of bringing the souls to the Lord? Do we have brothers and sisters? Or not? Yes. Amen. Si brother, brother, Ken, brother Michael Ondi? How about the others? Hello? No. <laughs> Commitment comes from the inside. No, it does not come from the outside. No, I cannot tell Brother Kenneth, Brother Kenneth, you are committed. No. He, he must tell me, Pastor, I will, I will now commit. Like, Two years ago, two or three years ago, I cannot remember anymore. When Brother Kenneth approached us, the first the, the thing is, is it you or Brother Art? I forgot already. But what I can remember is, he said, Pastor, magko commit na ako sa drums, di ba? Yun sinabi mo or parang not exactly like, like that, but the words is like that. Magko commit na ako, no? And you know, you know, his schedule is. Uh, when he goes for practice, he needs to leave at 10.30 because he goes to work at 12. 12 to? 12 to 8. So he comes, he comes here at 7, leaves at 10.30, goes for work 12 p.m., 12 midnight to 8 p.m. So it's straight. Now if you're not committed to what you're doing, you will not be able to do that. No, because physically, Manginaka physically, you will become weak. But because you are committed, then you are being empowered. Commitment is will do what is required even when no one is looking or on guard. Commitment is dedicating yourself to something, and commitment is having this palabra de honor. You know this, brother Michael, and other Kenyan brothers at the back? Palabra de honor. This is a Spanish. If I'm not mistaken, Spanish, Pastor, no? This is a Spanish word, Palabra de Honor, a word of honor. No? Means what you said, what you say, you will do. So that is commitment, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, uh, two Friday, uh, one Friday more, and then we have the anniversary already. So as was, as what our Pastor Manny always tells us, reminds us our commitment, one soul for the Lord. So can we commit ourselves?
to bring souls to the Lord. One soul lang. Amen. Amen. We will commit. So, see, for example, how many are we now? Are, yeah, amen. By the grace of God, of course. All by the grace of God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Because if you commit yourself without the grace of God, you will fail. We will fail. So, how are, many are we now? Uh, let's say 25. Or, or maybe 30. Or no, maybe 25 only. So, 25. If we commit one soul to the Lord, so by anniversary, we will all be 50. So, as it is, the church will be full. And then we have some more invited, so we will be pulled back here. So, brothers and sisters, we have one more Fridays to go. So, remember our commitment to the Lord. Commitment is something of our own free will comes from our, the inside we'll do what is required even when no one is looking dedicating ourselves to something this is to bringing a soul to the lord and having our word of honor so you said amen so that's your word of honor so we we will bring one soul for the lord amen amen, amen. so commitment is all about giving as well Romans 12, chapter 1, verse 2 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So this is commitment. Is also can also be about giving. Commit ourselves in giving. Bible says, offer, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So commitment, committed Christian is a Christian, is a Christian who serve. Now do we serve? Amen. So if you are committed, you need to serve. Amen. First of all, don't miss the the the, the Friday fellowship. Don't miss the Bible study. Don't miss the prayer meeting. No, don't don't miss these activities if you are committed. So committed Christian is a Christian who serve. First and foremost, do not do not miss bringing the soul for the Lord. Ephesians chapter six verse five says, "Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincere and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ." Bad servants obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would, as you would Christ. So that is committed. That is being a committed Christian, Christian that is serving. If the Bible speaks of of uh, people obeying their earthly masters, if we can obey our earthly master, so why can we not obey our Lord? Uh, Two types of commitment, okay. Two types of commitment. One is commitment to our earthly master and one is commitment to our God. So yung palayan yung pinakita ko kanina. So this verse here, Ephesians 6 verse 7, is commitment to our earthly masters. And then the other one, Ephesians uh, 6 5, uh, is commitment uh, to our God. Yan. Hebrews 10.25, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So this is committing ourselves to the works of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Related also to Romans chapter 12, verse 1, offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Matthew 22, verse 36 to 38, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. In other words, love the Lord your God, love the Lord our God with all our being, all your being. Amen? Yeah. And then, John 3, 16, we read this already before. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. So, wait, I will just open my notes. Yeah. Um, and with our, commit, with our commitment, we are given an authority. <clears throat> you know, in 
But Alan, pwede mong i-post yung, ano, yung easy worship. I-open mo yung easy worship. Tapos, open mo yung Luke 10, 19 to 20. Praise. So with our commitment, praise. Yeah. With our commitment, we are given an authority. Because while I was, while I was reading the message last night, um, I was really troubled with what is happening right now. I don't know if you you have any idea because, uh, like for example, in in Hannah's school, there were so many kids who are sick. 11 of them in one classroom and Hannah is sick as well uh, in bro brother Sunny and brother Jim Boy they are also sick in their accommodation so many so many people now have fever uh, so many people now are sick very sick that's why they are not here uh, there's this we have one friend he has a daughter and his daughter is also sick every starting every afternoon fever comes and he she she has been like this for a week now so that's why what, what while i was reading the message i was asking the lord that uh if really we are committed to the work of god then how are we how are we going to be able to you know to battle this sickness especially for me personally because Anna is sick right now. So the, the Lord reminded me, because you know, this past few weeks, I, I was very busy with our audit. I saw an audit in the company, and I remember the auditor says, uh, what is your management commitment? Auditors ask us. So, oh, I remember the message is all about commitment, and then the auditor says that there, there are three things there in, in ISO, the responsibility, authority, uh, and accountability. That's what he said. And then I read the Bible in Luke chapter 10, verse 19 to 20. It says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. I know we have read about this message, about this verse already from before. And to overcome all the power of the enemy, Nothing will harm you, however. Do not rejoice that spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Do you, do, but now, the question is, because in our audit, the, the, we were questioned, do you know what is your authority? That's the question of the auditor. Uh, and now, I would like to ask you, do, do you know, brothers and sisters, what, what is your authority in terms of this sickness? Hello? Brothers and sisters, are you still with me? Malapit na tayo. Malapit na tayo, matapos. Come on. Do you know what's your authority? This is our authority. The Bible says, the Lord says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. So if you are sick, there's nothing. Trample on them. Snakes and scorpions. Amen. You see, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, Brother Allen. Ephesians chapter 6, because brothers and sisters, this may I believe why we are becoming sick because of two things. One is uh, because of ourselves, we are abusing ourselves, and one is this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is this is the battle. So that's why we need to know what is our authority. Where do we stand? Where do we stand, brothers and sisters? You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 20, it says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I, last time, I think Pastor Bernie wanted to exert this. The God of peace will soon soon crush Satan under your feet. And in, in what we read in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, says, Trample. I've given you authority to trample snakes and scorpions. To trample down on snakes and scorpions. And if you will read Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Then. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. 
Yeah, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. That, that's Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 is actually talking about Romans 16 20 as well. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head. Who will crush his head? Who will crush the head? It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, no, uh, he was talking to the he was talking to the woman this time. Tama pastor, no? He was talking to the woman, but he was referring to a he. He will crush his head and you will strike his heel. No, he was talking to the snake, the serpent at that time. And Romans chapter 16 verse 20 says, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. So, really, he will crush your head, but who, the Lord will use who? Will use us. That's why you remember last time, I, I can still remember, we, Pastor Bernie asked us to write the word here, Satan in our uh, shoes. I think I don't have shoes that, that time, sleepers, so I wrote there, Satan. We, we need to crush on the work of Satan. Isaiah 15, 52 verse 7 says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvations, who say to Zion, You, God, reigns. In Romans 10, 15, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So you see, the, our feet is very important. You know, our feet, we use our feet to bring good news. Amen? Amen. And, and now if he, if only this, this has become a revelation unto us, then truly what was said in Deuteronomy 28, 13 will come to pass that we are head and not the tail. Amen? So Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do and He will establish your plans. Amen. So that is the the last verse that I want to leave you, brothers and sisters. Commit your commit commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Amen. So if there are, if there's anything that you want to do, commit it to the Lord. You want to you want to have a boyfriend. Commit it to the Lord. You want to have a wife? Oh, <laughs> maraming tama. Maraming tama. Kanina parang inanto kayo ah. If you want to have a wife or or a husband, commit it to the Lord. If you have a problematic husband back home, commit him to the Lord. Yeah. So whatever you do, commit it to the Lord and He will make your, your uh, path straight. Amen? Amen? Amen, brothers and sisters. So, that's all, brothers and sisters. God bless us. Amen. Pastor Bernie, kawadaw po.